Thanks for staying with us. So the federal government, through its Ministry of Education, revealed to start engaging first class and second class upper graduates as teachers, according to the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Education, Sony Ekono. We are now limiting entry points of teaching only to the best that are qualified. We will engage individuals with second class upper and first class divisions. Now, many have argued that, is this the right approach? at this time, or is the federal government putting the cart before the horse? What are your thoughts? Let us hear. You can call us on 090-241-63440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your TVC so we can read your tweets. Right, so many have said that this is not necessary at this time because mm -hmm. we need teachers, we need people, uh, because currently, I mean, I know, like, I know in Lagos State, for example, you have to have a bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. uh, and um, you have to set a certain um, level you have to get before you become a teacher. But in some other states, you don't need a bachelor's degree. There's a school cert is fine. Mm -hmm. um, so in your view, is it the most appropriate thing at this time, considering the various regions that we have. You know, how they go to school in certain regions, not the same different school. So regions. is it the right thing at this time, do you think? I think um, the question the federal government should be asking first is why don't we have uh, two, one, and uh, first class graduates apply for the teaching job? Mm -hmm. That's the first question. Okay. Because we need to get to the root of why we have what we have before we start finding solutions so that we get solutions that are appropriate uh, commensurate to the problems we're trying to tackle. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that teaching is, first of all, a passion. It's not about uh, what Degree. grade you come out uh, with from the yeah. university. It's about the love for teaching. And not, uh, it's not necessarily because you have a 2-1, a first class, that will not make you a good teacher or a great mm -hmm. teacher. Yeah. Now, we have different, even as students, you know, when you're in the university, you know those that teach for the passion, those who love the job that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, what we see most times is, those at the bottom of the food chain who can't get jobs in other places end up teaching because that's where it's like the end bottom pots. Mm. That's the people that now come into the yeah. teaching profession because the truth is the teaching profession right now in Nigeria is not lucrative. Mm. Nobody goes to school to say, I want to be a teacher. Right. When you look at the economy and see how teachers are being treated and how they're being paid. Exactly. You know? So the question is, what can we do? to entice people who are qualified to, to come, into, come that into that teaching profession. That should be the first question. Then yeah. secondly, we need to understand that um, for you to be a teacher, every skill is learned, really. Right. So if you have an interest in being in that uh, profession, you can learn the skill of teaching. What parameters, aside from what you read or what you graduated with, yes. how can we equip you Mm. to be a best or a great teacher. Right. What are some of those things that we can keep giving to you? Mm. I graduated from, um, from Delta State University, political science. I did read education. But when I got my first job as a teacher, I was trained on the 21st century teaching methods. And before one year, I was doing amazing. I was loving so the job. You, so if they required you at that time to press class in education, you don't have I wouldn't have gotten the job. Right. But mm. I, because I had a passion for teaching, right. I was trained in the right, right. methods right. of teaching. So it's like, are we going to be losing some great um, um, teachers if we, we don't have if, to if, one. If, we, if, we, if we force and ensure that this um, new requirement is enforced? What do so you think? Uh, already they have several exams that they write for, you know, would be your intending teachers. Mm. So we have the um, TTC, uh, there's this exam. You know, my other sister is a teacher. They've written all the exams in Lagos, and yet the best of jobs, they keep missing them mm. because jobs in Nigeria require connection as opposed to qualification and passion. Wow. Now, you mentioned the issue of um, whether they are, whether, why they are not you know, attempting at those jobs. It's not necessarily about wealth. Most of them are not looking at a job that turns them into billionaires. They're talking about jobs that gives them dignity. Mm. So the worst paid... In fact, the lowest cadre of, uh, of uh, uh, arrangement is the other way around. So we still pay lawmakers higher than we pay teachers who are supposed to help us form society yeah. and form the minds of the leaders that are growing. And we insist on that method till today. Mm. And the same people are the ones deciding now that when you have studied in school and putting your best at you know, achieving the best results, they will still do a, another form of um, discrimination mm. because we have the discrimination of the colleges of education as opposed to those who have yeah. degrees in education. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they are passionate teachers or qualified in those fields or, you know, they have even um, self-taught themselves certain mm. areas, those exams will not expose that. You just need mm. to 
go and write the exam, carry a certificate and come. Right. Nobody does that assessment. We had the former commissioner for education in Edo State on the show when we before the incident, and she was talking about some of these things as part of the reason they need to completely overhaul the system. So federal government is like they sitting in a room. And looking at it, okay, what's the next thing we do now? Like this we'll go play go. This yeah, without so much the worry, the worry, without without the worry because you know I'm deep. putting the card before the horse. Because I, I'm saying that if you want a reform of the educational sector, is the first thing to begin to recruit <sighs> teachers with the first. They will not even apply. The first thing is first. Our curriculum is there. You've yes. not reviewed it. Obsolete. You've not salaries. Reviewed it. Salaries are Asu there. is still in debate with the, uh, the federal government while students are at home and they are still the, the Minister for Labor is calling their bluff saying after this negotiation fails, I have other methods. Mm. Meaning some people might be we will resign you people, uh, you know, aspire you people, whatever forms of knowledge you have will go to waste while we find other people. While students are at home, not considering Let me, what exactly we mm. need to in fact the education system itself. Let me take this call from Abdul. Abdul from the UK. Good morning, thanks for calling. Abdul, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks Good for calling. Morning. Go ahead, please. Morning. Yeah, I'm a first time caller. Welcome, Welcome to, the to the show. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I'm here. The, yeah, uh, regarding this topic of. Uh, thank you very much. Regarding this topic of um, first class graduate, the thing is that our government, they really have a problem of conversating with the people mm. because we have a lot of graduates first class already that are jobless mm. i think if they are really serious about this new um, employment why don't you take out those people that are already waiting mm. and engage them so that other people that are still in the system we work harder we prepare so that they also mm. can come out with first class so that they can see that their mates mm. has already been have already been engaged as lecturers mm. and in schools you can put some people in place let them go to those schools there are some people brilliant people that they don't they, they don't have first class but yeah. they are taking tutorials inside all the universities mm -hmm. they have passion for teaching mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm privileged yes. in doing my um, uh, degree program in university of Abuja. the best Lecturer, let me call him a lecturer, but he's also a PhD uh, uh, holder. He's a PhD, he's still doing his, uh, his program. Everybody enjoys that man's lecture. Mm. When he comes to the class, everybody will be happy. Yes. Because the lecturers, some of them are not even good as that guy. A very mm. young, vibrant guy. Mm. Those kind of people, they yeah. should have a automatic employment. All right. I think the government, I don't know how mm. else the citizen can engage Thank them. Thank you very much, Abdul. So, sometimes it looks as if we copy and paste. Because I know that mm. Finland, for example, um, the, the teaching profession is like... Yes. It's like the highest profession. It's like a most prestigious profession. So if you go to Finland, there are certain levels, certain um, levels you must have before yeah. you can become a teacher. Mm -hmm. So if you want to copy and paste and bring what you're doing in the different countries to us, copy, right now. Copy, copy, no, copy the right <laughs> things or copy at the right time. Yeah, exactly. The lip service is what pains me. So we wanted to create employment and the federal government, the government of President Muhammad Wahari came into power and thought, let's create empower. Everybody loaded it. So they came... And degree holders, just like Abdul was mentioning, were the ones that we converted into a power. Today, the most unsatisfied group of people, you know, mm. the most displeased group of people with this government are the people under empower. Mm. They are the most frustrated, constantly asking. In fact, the way they, they, they put most of them off the, the, the project without any notice. Mm. People are constantly sending messages asking us to discuss empower. We have them, you, and you sit down, and now you just look at the group of yeah. people. Say, you know, I have to go on a break because we need to bring in an educationist here. Because the people that are saying that they want to call it first class, do they have first class? They are the all of them. federal government, all of it's them. May I quickly Please. say something before we run off? Yeah. We are forgetting that um, education, the uh, intelligence is not really uh, determined by our examinations. Mm -hmm. And especially the kind of examinations we have, which places emphasis on just memory, cramming, rote, cramming, mm -hmm. rote learning, mm -hmm. you know. So if you do that, you're going to do a disservice to people who actually have the talent of teaching to be in that industry because you've just put a cap over mm -hmm. their head that once you don't get this, which we know that even in that, those ones that even got the two one and the first class, probably they just copied and pasted. All right, let us move on a break because uh, from the presidency all the way to local government, we would like to also make the same requirements. So maybe mm. Nigeria will be better that way. But let's go on a break. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So uh, we can still call us on 90 
63440. You can tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your VTVC so we can read your tweets. We're trying to get Professor Ngozi Osarewe, uh, an educationist, to. Oh, I'm told Professor is on. Good morning, Professor Osarewe. Are you still there? Good morning. You are very faint. Oh, good to have you on. I'll try to speak a bit louder. Can you hear me now? Uh, it's better now. It's better. Oh, now. great. I can hear you. Good to have mm. you back on the show, ma'am. So this conversation concerning um, increasing the, the requirement for teachers to become, uh, to have first class or second class upper. What are your initial thoughts on this? My initial thoughts are that those are thoughtless thoughts. Hmm. You don't just start a policy without thinking it through. Mm -hmm. How can you wake up and say this must be first class mm. or two one to be employed as a teacher. Number one, do you have the adequate infrastructures on ground to be able to, the enabling environment to be able to produce those quality of teachers you are asking for? Mm -hmm. Number two, at the point of admission, who are you admitting? Is it the same faculty of education that everybody sees as a dumping ground? All those that didn't make the cut off for their program mm -hmm. are sent to faculty of education. Mm -hmm. Number three, assuming that this policy works out of the blue, what happens to all the people that met two, two, and third class mm -hmm. who are very good students? Exactly. And how and where do you think you can retain a first class holder to be in the classroom? Mm -hmm. What incentives? are you going to give? Because those are the hot cakes. Mm. Our concern should be one. How do we make this enabling environment to be conducive for people to bring out their best, the best. competencies, their best ability to be able to impact properly mm. and adequately and effectively on our children? Mm. The person mm. that made the first class may not be the best teacher. Mm. The person that made a second class upper may not be the best teacher, may have the book knowledge, book in quotes, but does not have the communication and the interactive ability that is needed. Mm. So, Ma, in it your own... Are three, three areas, not just to come and teach and go away. The right. other are, what of the affective? Mm. What of psychomotor? Ma, in your own assessment, therefore, what should be the first step the federal government should take in a complete the educational step, sector The before. first step the federal government should take is what ASU has been hammering on. Mm. Our facilities. Yeah. Our facilities are all decreased. Mm. You have to first of all upgrade the facilities and by the time you upgrade the facilities and by the time the structural materials are available and the people that are supposed to teach these people that will make first class and two one are well motivated to teach all those things must be taken into cognizance yeah. and you also have to look at the negative aspect of this because it may not lead to everybody trying to do whatever that is humanly possible to make that two one and right. teach it. and yeah. when you no, have we... admitted some students for a particular program, and you are now saying that they must have first class or have two one. That is not a normal curve. A normal curve will have few first class, few two one, mm -hmm. many two two, yeah. and some first that class. Is. That right. is a normal curve, mm -hmm. and okay. that is what right. we should. Let me get a few more questions in for you, ma. So, ma, ma, for most of us, it's uh, just about the, uh, you know, the re reward. Yes, can you hear us? I can hear you Go now. On. Yes. So for most of us, it's about the reward for teaching. If the federal government were to put a value to the first class and two ones graduates, what would you consider, uh, you know, their worth in today? What would I consider worth? Their the reward? worth of a first class graduate teacher. What would you consider? What remuneration amount? Amount. Figures. Remuneration per month. What would you consider would their sense. worth? No, you don't. You don't pay people according to the results they have. You don't do that. The only thing is give the person what will make the work conducive. 
gives a particular salary. In fact, even if you have a first class, as a fresh graduate, it's still level eight. You cannot be given level 10. Mm. It's still level eight, step one. You understand? Right. The most important thing is give them what will make teaching comfortable, enticing, interesting. Right. What will make them wake up in the morning and they're eager to go to work? Yeah. Right. What will make them, at the end of the month, they get their salary and all the allowances right. associated right. with it? Okay. What will make them in the morning to wake up and know that if anything happens to me, Mm. My family will be taken care of. Right. Those okay. are the things we should focus on. Right. Not mm. first class, Thanks, not two one. Right. Okay. Because it now right. means that people will go to any extent to, to get, get the job. To first yeah. class and to get two two. Mm. Right. And when you now take away this first class and two, what, uh, two and two one, mm. what happens to those people that study the education diligently, very good teachers that have two two? What will happen to them? You throw them into the open. Right. Or you do what with them. Mm. Okay, let me get one more question for you, Ma. All right, Ma. So I also have a problem with um, how um, people who want to study education, how they are being admitted. Mm. Like you highlighted it when you said the, mm -hmm. they are like the yes. end. If they don't meet the cutoff of um, the main pr uh, program, then they just they, go they, into they education. Their desire. Yes. So I, shouldn't we, you know, place if, if you know, shouldn't we... Um, I don't know how to put it now, but don't reduce those coming into, don't reduce the qualifications for those coming into the education department. It's a way of boosting that department as well. Because that is what we have always insisted on. Okay. Admit the people that show the initial interest to study education. Mm -hmm. If, the, as I bought the jam form, I filled in education. Mm -hmm. And somebody bought the jam form and filled in law. And did not meet the cutoff of law. No. And maybe that person scored 260, mm. and the cutoff is 265, for instance. And I put in education, and I scored 240. And you will not take me, mm. and you will not go and take this person. Who wanted the law initial initially. interest is very key. That person just wants to have a degree in the, yes. in the university and walk away. But this person that has shown initial interest, that interest is key in sustaining him or her in the system. And you cannot, finish, and those people, even those people, when they finish, they don't stay in education. They leave. Yeah. And you think, of, we, we, we've not bothered to think about the investment that has been made on them and the loss. To the educational system mm. those are the key issues mm. we should thank not put the cat before the horse thank the you horse very should always be before the cat yeah. we should ensure as a federal government right. to provide the enabling the environment, environment to mm. ensure that every uh, student in any course right. has what it takes to study such a course mm. and come out and their interest should be key. You can bring me with a first class and bring another person with a tutu and tell us to teach a group of 20 students. The way we would get across to them would the be difference. different. Yes. Mm. It would be different. Yes. So Thank we you. should forget this. Uh, it, it is really, really right. mind boggling that right. people can sit down and be thinking about that. Mm. As Thank you so much, Professor. Rule, you pigeonhole people in, into certain areas. Thank it you so much, Professor. That way. Yeah. It does not work that way. Right. I have to let you go now, but are you always, the, does the federal government ever invite you over for, for this kind of conversations on education? Because we wonder why it's the kind of people that talk to them. No, yeah, it was an announcement we had the same way you heard it. Hmm. It's an announcement. You know, all these are things that are being said to make sure they deflate and divert attention hmm. on the issues as soon as is issues. raising. Right. Hmm. Revitalization of the university system. Mm. Thank you so much, Professor Nazi <laughs> Osari. I have to um, wrap up this, but thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Yes. Have... Let's take a few more tweets before we run off. Kayo Dekaka says Nigeria must stop the prevalent policy of anything goes. Teaching has an, has an objective and it has the methodologies that benefit more. The teaching methods are learned for effective knowledge impact, which mm. book knowledge cannot do. Nigeria must be organized. 
Okay. But Lawrence says a country that cannot pay 30k minimum wage is talking of employing first class graduates. By the way, is the learning environment conducive for the first class to be produced? Mm -hmm. Andrew in Street says a first class graduate who made first class or two one shouldn't be the requirement for becoming a teacher. It's not rocket science. You must, you need a teacher for students who has a great communication skill, communicative skill, and enjoys their work. And I think that's that's the summary of you know. Okay, as, so as we wrap up, I think it's important that for the federal government to engage people like Professor Ngozi because stakeholders in the in this kind in of conversation. Industry. You don't just wake up one morning. Right. You know, my I know somebody that went to the World Economic World Education Forum earlier in the year, okay. and those who represented Nigeria, he said it was just this, it was embarrassed just come, to come see down. the kinds of people that came to represent us. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but we should have proper educational sector stakeholders to be part of the conversations on education in Nigeria. Let's go on the and come back to the issue of increase in fuel prices. That's hot. Stay with us. We'll be right back.